What's good? It's Wug. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel if you are into the fight talk. Caleb Plant just successfully defended his IBF title at 168 by defeating Caleb Truax via dominant unanimous decision. The betting odds here told you uh, what the boxing public thought of this fight and about Truax's likelihood of winning the fight. Truax momentarily held the belt after he upset James DeGale and then lost it in a close uh, decision loss in their rematch. James DeGale retired a couple fights later, so this wasn't even a uh, prime DeGale that Truax beat, but he was still ranked, at least according to Ring Magazine, as a top seven, top eight, 168 pound fighter so theoretically you could say well this is a quality opponent for Caleb Plant but those in the know knew that while Truax is kind of a rough and tumble guy and can give a lot of people a lot of uh, problems because of how aggressively he walks certain opponents down you know we more or less thought that Caleb Plant would outclass Truax and the question was whether or not Truax could even make it interesting or uncomfortable for the first few rounds and whether Plant would be able to finish Truax. Well, he wasn't able to finish Truax, but he won uh, just about every round, if not every round against Truax. So the question now is, does the IBF title holder, Caleb Plant, um, simply wait for Canelo to not only defend his title, towards the end of February against Avni Yildirim, not somebody who the public is excited to see Canelo fight, but it is a mandatory, so he's taking care of business there, defending both his WBA and WBC 168 pound titles. And then is supposed to fight again, just like three months later versus Billy Joe Saunders, who's currently the WBO belt holder at 168. So Canelo's stated mission is that he wants to collect all four major titles at 168. And if that is still the plan, then if he defends his title successfully against Abney Yildirim, which most believe he will, and then beats uh, Billy Joe Saunders uh, a few months later, which I'm, most will think that he's going to do it. Although those in the know know that Billy Joe Saunders at least poses an interesting matchup problem. Uh, potential matchup problem for Canelo. But if Canelo is able to get th through those two fights where he's signed to matchroom, Eddie Hearn, a two fight contract, right? He, they worked together for this last fight against Callum Smith, which was Canelo's first fight post Golden Boy, but still on the zone, right? So he handled that. Then it looks like they're going to do these next two fights together, Canelo with Eddie Hearn matchroom. So if he's able to win both of those, then he should be holding the WBC, WBA, and WBO titles to where the only belt left to collect is Caleb Plant's IBF title. Now, Caleb Plant is with Al Heyman PBC, so there are some political uh, difficulties and obstacles that they're going to need to clear to make that fight. But because Canelo will theoretically be a free agent if he handles business against Yield Durham and then Saunders, he'll be free to either, you know, still partner with Hearn if they if he wants to conduct business further with him and then do cross promotional, uh, ha conduct cross promotional affairs to get the matchroom guy in the ring with the PBC Al Heyman guy. Caleb Plant. They'd have to work out what platform, who gets paid what, all the other stuff, but also the promotional stuff like which platform. Is it going to be fought on the DAZN streaming service or is it going to be with a, like a Fox pay-per-view, um, Showtime pay-per-view since those are the entities that Al Heyman and PBC are currently working with? Or is Canelo and his team, the Reynosos and so forth, are they going to go at it alone without Eddie Hearn after they take care of that two fight business and just walk across the street to Al Heyman PBCs and say, hey, one fight deal or two fight deal, however they need to make it work. Um, I want I want that fourth belt against uh, Caleb Plant. So is Caleb Plant really just going to sit after this January uh, defense? and wait for nearly a year for Canelo to, to have two fights to then win the Canelo lottery because we all see it as clear as day. Everybody at 168 as well as 160 are basically just sitting and waiting and Canelo watching and wishing and hoping, right? They all want that Canelo fight. Triple G, uh, 
to to another degree, the Charlos, which it, I mean, Jamal Charlo is going to have to come up from 160 to make that happen. So with Triple G, but again, Canelo's plan and C Canelo is the shot caller here is that he wants to you know unify all four titles. So on one hand, if Caleb Plant is going to do that and just going to sit pat and let Canelo fight this guy and then this guy and then wait for Canelo to come around to collect your belt, the only belt remaining. You could get it from a from an opportunistic standpoint. It's like, okay, are you gonna fight David Benavidez, who's the guy who I think that every knowledgeable boxing fan wants to see Caleb Plant fight in the interim, right? David Benavidez is the two-time WBC title holder. He lost the belt the first time due to a cocaine a positive test, and then the second time he missed weight against his uh, last opponent, Romer Angulo. So he's lost the WBC title twice, not once actually in a fight. So David Benavidez right now is kind of looking like a boogeyman in the division in that he's now a non-belt holder. So now people could uh, duck him with uh, justifiable, plausible deniability. But if you look at this division and what it's looked like over the past year before Canelo really started to make his name and stake his flag in the division, you had an undefeated champion in K Callum Smith. You had an undefeated champion in Caleb Plant. You had a undefeated champion in Gilberto Ramirez. And you had an undefeated champion in David Benavidez, which makes one wonder how the hell are all these guys calling themselves champion, holding a belt, but refusing to fight anybody else to unify these titles. So so now Canelo's kind of coming in and breaking that mold saying, no, I want them all. I want them all. Does Caleb Plant really have the nerve after he collected the title versus Jose Uscaragay in an upset? Uscaragay looked pretty good collecting the title against Andre Durrell in their rematch. But ever, ever since Plant beat Uscaragay for the IBF belt, he's fought Mike Lee, Vince Feigenbutz, and now Caleb Truax, who again was ranked in fairness in the top 10 via by uh, Ring Magazine, but we knew that Caleb Truax didn't have a good shot here against Ka Ka uh, Caleb Plant, didn't we? So does Caleb Plant really have the nerve to say, nope, Canelo, I'm gonna let you do all this and I'm not gonna fight anybody. I don't care if they say that I've, I'm taking a whole bunch of softball fights since becoming an IBF champion. I know what I wanna do. And he even said when he interviewed with Max Kellerman, I'm here to fight the fights that I want to fight and to solidify the plan that I've got, that I've put in place. I'm not gonna take the fights that the public wants me to fight, that you want me to fight, that anybody else wants me to fight. This is my career, my plan. I'm gonna do things my way. Caleb Plant said that but I'm like for real man you and David Benavidez are both on PBC everybody who's not looking at Canelo as undisputably the best fighter in this division which I think most believe he's the best fight fighter in the division but sure we want him we want him to fight Caleb Plant and David Benavidez and to a lesser degree Billy Joe Saunders but if you look at Canelo's career, he's been doing this heavy lifting throughout his career. He's fought the Miguel Cotos. He went up to 175 to test his skills against Sergey Kovalev, which, yes, he was a, a, over the hill. But Canelo went up to fight Sergey Kovalev, okay? And he's obviously fought Floyd Mayweather, Daniel Jacobs, Triple G, twice. So, and he just fought Callum Smith, who... Say what you want, but Caleb Plant wasn't fighting Callum Smith. David Benavidez wasn't, you know what I mean? So... Canelo's already been doing way heavier lifting than any of these other belt holders at 168 and they're still going to make him clean out all the all the other belts so that maybe he could swing my way and we could get and we could get it on. Come on, Caleb. I like for the sake of boxing and I know that this is a purist argument here, but if you really want anybody to take your claim at being the best at 168 seriously, if you're going to do the Feigenbutz and Mike Lee thing on this end, at least do the David Benavidez clean house within the PBC community first. It's not like, you're, and you're not fighting a Charlo. They're, you know, Jamal's still at 160 and Jamel's still at 154. So you're not fighting them. You haven't fought like a, a, a Danny Jacobs who, you know, it's yet to be determined how he's going to operate at 168. We've only seen him against Chavez Jr. and Gabe Rosado. He didn't look great in either of those fights, but he won both. But this just totally speaks to people's um, cynicism or skepticism when it comes to boxing and the way that it's uh, structured, you know, to, to where you could have a Caleb Plant 
have a, a string of easy title defenses, easy, uh, relatively speaking, and by relatively, I mean, look at Canelo's schedule or any other of these, you know, truly great champions who are testing themselves against the best, as opposed to just, you know, Caleb Plant seems satisfied with just staying pat and having that big Canelo payday. And who knows, by the time they get to that point, maybe there's a rematch clause to where they have two fights together. So say Caleb Plant does uh, pull off the upset and beats Canelo. Well, whatever he got paid in that first fight, he's going to get paid a lot more in that rematch. And then you could just sail off into the sunset, you know, call it a career. That's a damn successful career, right? Whether or not you win or lose that second fight with Canelo. So from a business management standpoint, I get it. I get why Caleb Plant would duck, essentially, a David Benavidez. But from a competitive standpoint, we've got to call a spade a spade on that one. That fight needs to happen. That's on the PBC side, and we're going to have several months before Canelo has handled business against Yul Durham and seemingly against Billy Joe Saunders to where now he's going to say, where's that last guy holding a title? Oh, you? You know what I mean? So, uh, I, again, I get it from a career management standpoint, but from a legacy solidifying standpoint, competitive standpoint, nah, man, nah, you, you got to beat one of these other kings first. <laughs> it's like... But yeah, let me know what you thought about Caleb Truax versus Caleb Plant or Caleb Plant versus Caleb Truax and what you think about uh, Caleb Plant's career management goals and what this and how this 168 pound division is shaping up. And yes, one of the fights that I would love to see the most is obviously Canelo Alvarez versus Jamal Charlo. But it looks like Canelo has no plans at going back down to 160. In fact, they the WBA took took away his 160 pound title, and I think that it would be a great move for Jamal Charlo to fight either um, Demetrius Andre or Gennady Glovkin. I don't see any reason why Glovkin is still avoiding a Jamal Charlo fight. I think Jamal Charlo wants that fight right now, but I think Glovkin wants a Canelo fight so bad, or it looks like they're entertaining a Glovkin versus Jaime Munguia fight, which Munguia is a fun fighter to watch. He's still kind of new at 160, although now he's fought like, you know, three times maybe. But although Munguia is now a name with Golden Boy, also fighting on the zone, so that one should be an easier fight to make if Golden Boy would really do that to his fighter, which I guess at some point you've got to see if, you know what happens when the rubber hits the road against an elite fighter, even though he's kind of fading, still elite, uh, Triple G. And, you know, we'll see, but uh, I just want to see more unification fights, in, you know, at both 168 and 160. But yeah, let me know what you think. Please leave your comments in the comments, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you are into the fight talk. I'm Woog, thanks for tuning in.